Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to Learning Game Development. This time we're going to take a look at some physics. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every video in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. There's always loads to see, loads to learn and loads to do. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, physics should really go hand in hand with collisions. And what I mean by that is it's all good and well having physics exist in your game, but if there's nothing for it, the physics to collide with, there is no point to it. A good example would be if this cube right here had physics attached to it, it would fall to the ground. However, because this plane isn't set up correctly with its collision, it could fall straight through it. So let's put that into practice. So I'm just going to uncouple this cube first, bring it there. Ah, okay. So it's probably worth noting that we have to unpack that prefab first. So if we right click and you'll see all oh, list here, uh, the prefab, you can unpack completely. So the reason it's done that is because we created that, didn't we? Uh, last time that prefab, but either way we can now uncouple it. So let's apply some physics to this cube. Uh, if we could quickly go to our game view, we'll be able to see it's this cube that we're applying the physics to. If we go to add component and we can search down here for physics and the one thing we want to deal with more than anything is known as a rigid body and this will apply gravity as long as it's ticked so if we press play now and observe what happens we now have physics so i have slightly modified this plane uh, it actually has a mesh collider on it and if we were to untick that mesh collider, we would be able to see fall straight through. So this is what I mean by saying physics and collisions go hand in hand. So everything that needs to have physics or be affected by physics needs to have a collider on it, unless you want to do something for some other purpose. For example, if you actually want the cube to fall through, then obviously you wouldn't need to have the collider on there. This actually gives me a good opportunity to go to the console as well. We keep getting this error and if going back to scripting here, we know that it doesn't like it because basically we don't have anything attached on here because we created that extra uh, prefab, didn't we, on there. So in times like this, you don't need to worry too much about it, but it, it gives me a good opportunity to show you what the console is for. So we're going back a little bit there, but either way, Let's keep exploring this. So we've got the rigid body on here. Now we can play around with a rigid body as much as we need to. We can change different things to make it react differently depending on what we want it to do. And I think a lot of the time, just the basic rigid body with the basic settings will be enough for what you're trying to achieve. So if you do want to play around with the physics settings, then you can do it but just make sure you do have the collision settings exactly right as well. Another thing to note is when something is a trigger. So if we tick is trigger and press play once again, we'll see that fall through, even though this actually has that mesh collider attached. So what we're saying here is because we're using this as a trigger, it means that things can pass through it. Using a trigger is very useful in video game development for sections where you perhaps want to walk through and a sound plays straight away. That is what we'd use a trigger for, but that comes down to physics and collisions once again. So you can think of it as anything that would happen within the Unity environment, uh, whether it be you know walking somewhere and trying to play a sound or whether you've got some rocks falling, something like that. It's all down to physics and collision. They go hand in hand and I cannot stress that enough. There are different ways to play around with the physics. So if we were to take this cube, hold control, press D and duplicate and intersect them round about there. If we press play, we'll end up with something a bit peculiar. So obviously they're, oh, they're still ticked as trigger. So that's, that was peculiar in itself, I think really, uh, because they were, still triggers but when they're not triggers you will end up seeing them split apart they won't fall together physically but another great thing of working with all of this is working with objects that can suddenly 
explode with physics. So to put that into a bit more of a better perspective, if I set these cubes back as zero, and let's get rid of that cube, and let's place this cube down here to the ground, and let's duplicate it just a couple of times. And essentially all I'm doing here is just creating a little something that allows us to experiment, we could say. So if I build a bit of a, not a castle per se, but it's just a, a little bit of fun. So you can see here, all I'm doing is just putting a bunch of these objects together. And remember, all of these have the rigid body attached. And we should see something mildly... Yeah, there we go. So they're staying still. Now, what would happen if we were to have an object in the middle of those that suddenly appeared with uh, its physics? They would go everywhere. So we can use physics to create various different effects. So I'm going to illustrate that by adding in a 3D object and a sphere. And I'm going to make that sphere a bit bigger than what it is. So let's change the scale to 3 by 3 by 3. In fact, maybe that's too big. Let's have 2 by 2 by 2. And I'm going to turn off the mesh renderer. That would theoretically make it invisible. So if I then turn that off and then press play, and then turning the sphere on, not a lot will happen until we actually attach a rigid body. But we can use this to our advantage. If I turn on the mesh renderer once again, we can see in the scene view where that actually is. So depending on how you want to play around with a lot of this, you can have some awesome things happen. So you can see there the actual objects themselves moved. So if I turn the sphere, um, sorry, keep it off, press play again. And if we head back to the scene view, we can see it there. But again, nothing is really going to happen here. You can see that just appears there. So adding various different things like a rigid body. So if we go to physics and go to rigid body and let's press play and let's turn the sphere on. You can see just by adding that physics of the rigid body, you can create a different effect. So I'm going to do that again, but inside the scene view so we can see the physics occurring inside the scene. Well, remember, not that sphere is actually there. We turn the mesh off so we can't physically see it. So that's how we can create that illusion of those boxes just exploding. And you can see the way they tumble back down. Again, that's all the physics. And you can play around with how that reacts with a couple of these settings. And it's entirely up to you how you play around with them, how far you want to go with it. But what it comes down to is these are just the simple physics of the Unity engine. And I would recommend playing around with them a lot more because it is a lot of fun to play around with physics and see what you can do. And that does also count for, let's say, any assets you've brought in from the asset store or anything like that. You can still apply the same sort of physics. Uh, so if we were to, for example, bring all these way up here and press play, obviously because the rigid body is on there, the physics, they would all tumble down. So they do behave fairly realistically the way they tumble, but again playing with the settings you can make them appear heavier, lighter, you can work with them in different ways. Uh, so it's actually quite useful in that sense. So next time we're going to look at some UI overlays and at this point, you know, hopefully you've learned quite a bit and you might already be bored of where we are and want to go further, but I implore you to stick around and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.